कवकथामृत तप्त जीवन कविभीत कलमशापम श्रवण मंगल मदात भुवि गृणंती ये बुरीदा जना ओं शांति 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 ओ लॉर्ड योर गॉस्पेल इज लाइक नेक्टर एंड ब्लिस अपॉन द पेन स्ट्रिक एंड लाइफ ऑफ सफरिंग ह्यूमैनिटी इट डिस्पेल्स ऑल द सीन्स एंड मिस डीड्स ऑफ लाइफ इट ब्रिंग स्पिरिचुअल वेलफेयर इन लाइफ beauty prosperity and grace spreads through and through one who listens to the holy message they are the real givers who preach and pronounce the nectar of your holy message to the suffering humanity om peace 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 be unto us all so we are reading the gospel of sri ramakrishna and the entry was on september 2 September two, na no, September one, <coughs> and it was Sri Ramakrishna is talking with the devotees, and then in that discussion, then there he was talking to the doctor, and he seeing the doctor, he be being like a child, and he's asking. Sri Ramakrishna to the physician, sir, please cure my throat. I am reading on page eight four four, eight hundred forty four. Please cure my throat, doctor. Cure you, physician, master. The physician is Narayan himself. I honor everybody. You may say that if I look on all as Narayan. then i should keep quiet but i also accept the words of the mahut narayana the pure mind and the pure atman are one whatever comes up in the pure mind is the voice of god god alone is mahut narayana why should i not listen to god he alone is the master as long as he keeps i consciousness in me i shall obey his orders the doctor was going to examine sri ramakrishna's throat the master said dr mahendra sarkar pressed my tongue the way they press a cows like a child sri ramakrishna said to the physician pulling at his Shut sleeps again and again, sir. My dear sir, please cure my throat. Looking at the laryngoscope, he said with a smile, "I know it. You will see the reflection in it." Nor in the sang, but on account of master silliness, there was not much music. So what we find here, that's a great lesson. We also suffer from disease. and there is a question how do we look up on doctor many people emotionally think i am a devotee of god god will take care of me so i need not go to doctor i do not take uh, many emotional people are there do think but sri ramakrishna makes a good reconciliation here he says that god is in everyone so we can hear god's voice from anyone and he is talking about the incident that that one mad elephant was going and the mahut was guiding the mad elephant he said that get out of the way because mad elephant is going so give way to that so then don't, don't block but one devotee he heard from his guru that god resides in everything so he thought tell god will also remain is in the elephant so why the elephant god will touch me I, i in me is god in him is god and then he did move from the road and the the elephant came and then caught him threw him on the side and he broke his arms and things then when this situation happened 
then he asked others asked why the why do you get out of the way of the elephant mad elephant is saying someone is telling you because no no i heard that god is in everyone so then come the question yes god is in everyone god is in the elephant but god is in also the person who is saying get out of the way so why did you not listen to that god so this is the point uh, everything is divine everything is good but so long you are in the body so you have to accept your disease you have to accept your doctor take those cares and keep your philosophy high that kind thing but in the material world world like a as he deals the material world so if any health issue go to the doctor take advice use them and get cured so that's why that is the idea here is given that as a krishna is like a child he is beyond all this pain and suffering but he is impatient being in the as we become impatient more with our disease and when pain and agony is come we become totally overwhelmed with that so in that sense here also ramakrishna is like a child saying the doctor please cure me you cure me because you are narayana god that's why in our tradition normally in other tradition they try to give up their body in whatever way but in our tradition from ramakrishna to vivekananda to brahmananda to shivananda down the grade till today anything physical thing you go to the doctor finish what is the opinion what the doctors give the opinion surgery yes if the doctors decide it is if the doctor say no it's no he one uh, sadhu he he has this cancer in the tongue and the tongue was once operated and then one third is gone and then again cut again cut lastly it became such that he cannot eat anything then the jaw was cancer again it is spread there that was cut out that is what a torturous operation after operation and after operation. pathetic but bane our belumar sadhu senior sadhu says go to doctor what can you do so long is doctor tries let it follow him so giving this idea that in the to deal with the problems of the world you know in that from that level keeping your ideal high but you think that uh, don't uh, even sri ramakrishna being so dedicated to god and his the surrender but god he is showing the path how to live in the world many many people emotionally think that but their mind is not that high but they still the thing okay that that there is some ego play going on uh, you are ignoring the science the treatment the procedure eh? of course all science is uh, sometimes there is some mistakes maybe in the doctor size but that is a different issue but to follow those. so uh, and sri ramakrishna is saying the pure mind and the pure atman are one and the same thing that means what is spiritual life means to purify the mind what is purification of the mind purification of mind means yesterday the sarvopriyanand swami was telling no you have no control over the movement of the mind no it moves wherever it goes it movement because of the behind is the some energy we have no control over that so this is the point how to purify the mind to think of god how to think of god to concentrate on god and every day whatever you doing as a karma yoga ideal offering to him while doing the work with concentrated mind so these are the different procedure to purify the mind and that's called chitta shuddhi and when it says a chitta shuddha karma we perform all the work and if it is done or oh, without any intention or dedicated to god then it purifies purifies our mind and 
as soon as the mind begins purified, pure self, the impure self is body mind identified. This one, that pure self, that reveals itself spontaneously. Whatever comes up in the pure mind, and in that pure mind, whatever comes, up, it becomes true, because this whole creation has come of the pure mind of God. He said, "I was alone. I am alone. I will be many." Yeah? That means one became many by the wish uh, in the pure mind, cosmic mind, pure mind. That's why he said that we should listen to God every th everywhere, but we should listen to God as long as He means the Lord keeps eye consciousness. So we'll have to follow that. Now we enter into the reading of September 2. After finishing his midday meal, Sri Ramakrishna sat on the small couch and talked to Dr. Bhagavan Rudra and M. Rakhal, Latu, and other devotees were in the room. The physician heard all about the master's illness. Sri Ramakrishna came down to the floor and sat near the doctor, master. You see, talking to the doctor, you see, medicine does not agree with me. My system is different. Well, what do you think of this? When you touch a coin, my hand gets mistwisted. My breathing almost stops. Further, if I tie a knot in the corner of my cloth, I cannot breathe. My breathing stops until the knot is untied. That's a, <laughs> he's asking the doctor, what the doctors will know. <laughs> uh, are, but he, like a child, he's thinking doctors may know why it is some physical ailment probably, why I cannot touch the coin, my hand gets uh, beaten like a jay. So these are the questions Sri Ramakrishna is putting to the doctor that I cannot touch a coin, my hand gets twisted, and not only twisted, my breath will stop, as if I am suffocating from breath. Further, if I tie a knot, knot means people used to use cloth in India, that was it, and anything you want to carry, you keep in one side and tie it in a knot. But tying in a knot means it is you're holding something. You're, you're trying to take something or hold or hold something. So that idea of me and mine and holding something, that even physically keeping something is impossible for him. And what happens? The same physical reaction comes. It is the uh, I think we can understand by our present day situation what we call the allergy. Allergy, allergic, we say allergic, you eat some food you do not know, huh? and then you start sneezing and you are, um, sometimes you are vomiting. So uh, sometimes uh, allergy, there is some cloud, uh, and the person has eye become red and his, his skin becomes a little uh, warm up. So these are the physical reactions. But this is a spiritual thing. He is far above that. That's why he is. But she is talking to the doctor to understand why it happens. The master asked the devotee to bring a rupee. When Sri Ramakrishna held in his hand, the hand began to writhe with pain. The master's breathing also stopped. After the coin had been taken away, he breathed deeply three times and his hand again relaxed. The doctor becomes speechless with wonder to see this strange phenomenon. Uh, that's a uh, very difficult thing to understand why it happens, but it happens because of the purity of the heart. Well, I didn't touch the gold amulet, no? 
that in a particular time probably, must, uh, but this is the 80, 1885, this is we are talking about 1885, September, end of the almost a year. Uh, but this point, uh, the, uh, they do not keep their mood all the time the same. Uh, Sri Ramakrishna used to live in different levels of uh, mood. That's why uh, that balloon mot, uh, that stairs, murti, uh, when Raja Maharaj Swami Brahmananda was asked to go and see that whether it is really represent Ramakrishna, then Maharaj said, what bhava, what mood, what, wha what shall I sanction? He is in the morning in one mood, in the noon time another mood, afternoon another mood, and according to the mood, his facial appearance changes. We, we know, according to mood, we are our ordinary level. You are angry, you look at the face. Uh, when you are very joyful, look at your face. When you are very emotional, look at the face, no? So these are all, it happens with I, we, the ordinary people. And Sri Ramakrishna, like a person who is totally intoxicated in God, and sometimes in the bhav mood of, say, Radha, sometimes in the mood of, uh, say, uh, Vedantic mood of non-dual experience, uh, dual, non-dual, and in that, different gods and goddesses, uh, sometimes Shiva mood, sometimes Mother Kali's mood. So it's a whole day and night he lives in so many moods. So that's why very difficult to say. So in one time probably, this is the period maybe 19, 1885. So this reaction is or felt, uh, he cannot touch the coin. I think the master asked the devotee to bring a rupee, and that, that happened. His breath, breathing stopped, and his hand did, and it when give away, threw away, then it becomes normal. The doctor said to him, action on the nerves. Doctor is talking. Yeah. When you touch the coin, probably there is a neuro affair. In those days, science was how much developed God knows. The master to the doctor, I got into another state of mind. It is impossible for me to lay off anything. One day I visited Sambhumalik's garden house. At that time I had been suffering badly from stomach trouble. Sambhu said to me, take a grain of opium now and then. It will help you. He tied a little opium in a corner of my cloth. And I was returning to the Kali temple. I began to wander about near the gate, as if unable to find the way. Then I threw the opium away and at once regained my normal state. I returned to the temple garden. So this is the example that Sambhu Mallik was a very rich man. Dakshineshwar temple where Ramakrishna used to live, just behind that, his property. And there is a very rich man, but you know, Sambhu's mother used to respect Ramakrishna heavily. And in Sambhu Malik's house only, there is a picture of Christ, Madonna, mother holding the baby. And looking at that, he had the experience. Christ became living there in his eyes. So when he's coming from that house with some opium grains, which has been given by Shambhu. The, he was a landlord also. So when he gave it, but because he has tied at the end of the cloth, how to carry? You carry in a pack, in a box, in a, some other container. So it is easy if you are wearing a cloth. So in the, at the edge of the cloth, it can tie it. So he, they tied it. But he walked from their home to the Dakshineshwar main gate. It's been maybe a few steps. And he could not find a road. What, how to enter into the, his own room, from gate to their room. And all confused and confused. Then he remembered, oh, ho, ho, 
is something is tied in me. I'm holding something, holding something. That means such a pure person, he cannot think of any worldly thing to hold on, huh? excepting God. I said the two examples, the doctor saw the monetary situation touching the coin and its effect, and he related this story. One day at Kamar Pukur, I picked some mangoes. I was craving them, carrying, I was carrying them for home, but I could not walk. I had to stay standing in one place. Then I left the mangoes in a hollow. Only after that I could return home. Well, how do you explain that? So Sri Ramakrishna telling these three stories. And no one story, not story, but it happened in front of the doctor by bringing the coin and holding it in the hand. And two are his experiences, he said. One, during the Dakshineshwar stay period, and another in Kamar Pukur, and he was carrying some mangoes, but he could not carry home because he's carrying something means you are taking, I will eat, eat it and I'll use it later on. No possession, actually total renunciation. That's why Sri Ramakrishna is, an, is called the ideal expression of the pure renunciation and what you call Holy Mother said, no, what is the beauty, what is the greatness of Sri Ramakrishna? Some say he is the harmonizer of all religion. That is the greatest. Jato mat, tato pat, that is the universal message, no? For this age, we also say that is the only thing. But Holy Mother said, no, 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 that is not the highest message. The greatest message is renunciation. A coin you touch, he will be rejecting. That means, where is the question of attachment? It is such a, uh, what you call, rep repellation or repelling mood comes by touching it even. You cannot want the question to take it. And holding anything of the world, any material thing, is really not for him to do. Yeah. Uh, Maharaj, is it Swami Vivekananda who said that for Ramakrishna, the greatest education was like nervous association of what he learned? Like, he learned that gold is bad, even if you touch him. No, that is nervous association means he knows anything material drags our mind down. So that go like a ghost entered, that thought entered into his mind such a way that that reaction comes naturally, even at the sight. If you hate someone, you will see that. Eh? You, have, you need not have anything, feeling anything. You start hating him, he's a bad guy. He does that, he did that, he did that. Just try a few days. You will be not thinking of that, just see that person, you will be reacting differently. That is in our, and, and similarly, the world is immaterial. Everything takes us, forget about God. So it entered into his mind in such a degree and depth that it, he, even physical touch, physical seeing will make. I, uh, that is another story. You know Gopala's ma. Gopala's mother was very poor, widowed lady. But she used to see Gopala, baby Gopala everywhere. All are Gopala, Gopala, Gopala. Oh, such an exalted lady. So she came to Balram Bose's house in Calcutta. And Sri Ramakrishna also happened to be there. And there are so all these and things, other commodities. With some boy, working boy, to carry it and put the boat. So Ramakrishna is also coming back to Dakshineshwar on the boat from that Balrambas's house. On the, from their home, the Balrambas' house, there, there is a river flowing, Ganga flowing, not far away, Bagbazar. So, that when the bag was carried by 
the boy or I do not know Gopal is my is probably they have given he is carrying she is carrying Ramakrishna looking at him angrily very unusual Gopal is my uh, Ramakrishna looks at him with all love and affection all the time but this time he started looking at Gopal is and that bundle bag they collected uh, stock of things uh, once and another time once and, and uh, Gopal is my feeling so uncomfortable so and Gopal is getting mad with me because I am carrying all this I didn't ask them they have given me but he thought that so to throw away but anyhow she carried it up to the Dakshineshwar and when the Dakshineshwar everyone came out of the uh, boat and Gopal Uzma went to Holy Mother and told Holy Mother Sarada Devi you know Gopal is very angry Gopal means Ramakrishna and living Gopal is Ramakrishna Gopal is very angry but I didn't ask for anything I never uh, beg anyone anything but they out of love they gave all these stocks and materials to take with me but he is disapproving and he's so angry with me then holy mother came in to rescue uh, that okay he is looking from his standard but you need all these things so don't worry i am saying you take home nothing will happen like a motherly affection he she solved the problem but ramakrishna could not tolerate he himself don't take anything and what the question of someone is carrying whom he loves more uh, so that's the that position possessiveness is a hindrance to spiritual life that is the lesson and he is the example of uh, non-possessive uh, um, personality uh, Hold, consume. Uh, accumulation, leave the group. Then all the sannyasa thing was gone. Ah, so these are idealistic people who are also Sri uh, Chaitanya. Ah, his renunciation, his detachment is extreme like Ramakrishna. You know, one time he used to go into ecstasy, you know. He will be so out of body consciousness if someone is to put some sugar in the tongue it will be dry tongue. The sugar will not be moisted. And we remember sweet sugar. See, our tongue is already sweet. <laughs> Saliva is coming, no? So they have re renounced, renunciation has reached to what degree? It's very difficult to understand. So Ramakrishna's life, actually, if we parallelly look at, uh, we can find some more similarities with Sri Chaitanya's life. As, as the example gave that he used to have some gooseberry every day. Someone used to bring every day, no? That's okay. You bring today like a, like, like a bird. bird. Bird takes whatever they can get in the morning, no? You, you be in the beach, you will find that all the um, birds come, the sun rising, they start hungry, they are hungry, whole night they slept. And they are searching for some food here and there. But after some time, picking some of the food, and they sit on the tree and started chirping, chirping. As if no problem, problem is solved. Hunger, food, finish. They don't store anything. That's why monks, uh, that's called jati. What, what uh, category of people we are, the monks, they're called bihangam. Bihangam is the bird. Why the birds? Because birds never accumulate anything. They never think what shall happen this noon time. I'll be hungry again. But even some birds are very intelligent to collect 
but they forget where they have kept. <laughs> the crow, crow is it's called the crows are very intelligent um, of the uh, bird, and they collect, eh? but they left somewhere with eyes closed so that no one can see. Okay, and then they forget what they have kept. So that's why birds are uh, free. They may be hungry, but they will have to find whatever available next time. That's that's why Ramakrishna is called the Paramahamsa, Sanyasi, monk, the supreme in the category of supreme swan. Swan, you know, swan, swan's example is this, swan swim in the water, but not a drop of water clings into the body of the swan. And even if it, you see that some water, when they shake, huh, and then all goes away. That means the world and worldliness cannot reach that swan. And in the human body, this is called the Paramahansas, Ramakrishna is called the Paramahansa, supreme swan, who lives in the world, lived in the world, but no attachment, nothing. What it appears to be, that is not really is there. So the example, the illustration of tremendous renunciation, detachment, has entered into the very personality in such a depth, even touching that, even seeing that, that reaction counts. So as I give the example, for us it happens. If I create some hatred tendency, uh, and you, every suppose every day you hear something bad, this guy is bad, and someone gives one point, tomorrow another point, third day another point, fourth day another point, you will be able to see not even that face of that person. He will be reactionary so much, and he also will feel that he does not like me. So this is the reaction happens. So that's why it is always called don't see fault with others. Holy Mother said, if you want peace, my child, don't see fault. That's for normal human life. And for spiritual life, how much? Right? You want to eternal peace, so you'll have to be more serious about finding fault in others. That does not mean that there is no fault in the other person. Make it a point. Holy Mother didn't say, that there will be no fault with other fault in the person. But you do not see the fault, you rather see what is good. So that it, that imbibes, Im, influences your life, you get associated with the goodness, so that goodness will take you to purify the heart. We think that we are doing good to the world by doing all this, seeing the bad things, this thing, that thing, why it should be. But we ruin ourselves because we do not know what we are taking in our mind. Hmm. So yeah, as a responsible person in the society, we'll, we'll have something. And everyone will have some defect. The, a person will be a mixture of good and bad. Somewhere goodness is more, somewhere is not that many. Many maybe bad qualities may be more. But I am for my spiritual growth, so I should have to inculcate what is the good side of it. I, I give the example, suppose in this room, if anyone, temple, anyone comes, they can find, I can find many dirty things. I can find that how the carpet is kept, it, it is eyesore. It should not be like that. It should be perfectly kept in parallel to the door and this and that. But I can go on looking at that and criticizing, and I can also look at that side. We can see the Lord also. That in the room, we can focus there, we can focus there. So in spiritual life also, we can look at the character of a person, this side or the other side. And what is done it is either it will reaction will come, then it will lower down our character, or it will improve our character. But if you don't see the negative, how do you know what you should not be? We know enough. For that, we need not have to see fault with others. With that, maybe many critic, analytically you can say that, but we know that. What is good, we know. 
Uh, we are adult. Uh, we are seeing the world. Enough of that is there. And for that, criticism is not necessary. One day, uh, the Kamar Pukur story also we heard that he picked some mangoes and I was carrying them home, but I could not walk. I had to stay standing in one place. This is the position. He is carrying and he cannot move as if some feet has been locked with some chain, somebody, as if he cannot put another step this way, that way. See, very, very birth, that is the point. Sri Ramakrishna is born. That's why they are called. Why they are avatar? One is that's because they are ingrained with these principles from the unconsciously they inherit, which is uh, unusual for this other people to think about. Doctor, there is a force behind it. He is talking from scientific perspective. There is a, there is there is a force behind it. Will force. That means your will force is such, I will not see this, I will not do this. You have done in such a way, as a result, that has manifested in your life as reaction to the, what is called kanchana, huh? the coin, the gold coin or met metallic, any metallic thing. And then this material to collect the, all those. He meaning the master, M says, he meaning the ma a master says that it is God, God force. It is will force. Doctor said it is will force. We, 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 we can think that it is will force. Um, my wish, I, I again and again I think and I do this and that's why it happens. But he said, no, no, no. There is no will. Your will is not important. God's will works to you. Meaning... That is also God's will, but to focus on God and God's wish. You say that it is will force. Master, to the doctor, again, again, I got into such a state of mind that if someone says I am better, I at once feel much better. The other day, the Brahman, he said, you are 50% better. At once, I began to dance. <laughs> but then like child, no? Like, they can easily be uh, cajoled with something else because they are simple mind. What you say, they believe. And Ramakrishna said that children have no doubt, less doubt. Mommy said, he is your uncle. Oh, but that's all. He does not argue, how the uncle? Why the uncle? Which day did he become uncle? <laughs> no question. So he says, he, he's your, um, uh, your cousin. Well, that's a, it's a cousin. <laughs> so simple uh, child. Uh, but it is child, not childish for spiritual life. It should be childlike. Sri Ramakrishna <clears throat> was much pleased with the physician. He said to him, you have a very fine nature. There are two characteristics of knowledge, a peaceful knowledge and absence of pride. See what a beautiful definition of wonderful character in a society. Forget about God or other thing. One is a peaceful nature. That person wants peace. Where, uh, oh Lord, we, we, we chant the San Francis prayer, uh, where there is hatred. Uh, send me so peace. So, AJ, that's why they are peaceful nature. Their nature is peaceful. They don't want to be in that place or create such restlessness in himself or with those who live, he live. And absence of pride. Their ego is less and less and less. Him. The doctor has lost his wife, master, to the doctor. I say that God can be realized if one feels drawn to him by the intensity of these three attractions. Child's attraction for the mother, the husband's attraction for the chaste wife, and the attraction of the worldly position for the worldly man. 
So he's saying that doctors, he praised the character of the doctor because he was very peaceful and he has very less ego. God also likes that, that who is egoless. Ishwara, uh, there is the Narada Bhakti Sutra that the devotees really, their egolessness thing in someone's character, God's love, the devotee who is egoless. So egoless, totally egoless, no one will be there, but the intensity of ego will be less so that he humble humility. Uh, it does not mean that in the front of other person you will have to show, show your humility, but internally to be humbled, uh, that is the point. I say to God, uh, God can be realized, and he says that three things are necessary, attractions, it's a pool, we should feel pool for God. How, what is the pool? The child's attraction for the mother. We see that baby, he will be, you can be with mommy is there and others are there, baby is playing. But if the mom does not stay there for a long time, then baby will be so restless you cannot just keep him in, in peace and he'll be crying and shouting and howling and you give all the other things by which he becomes peaceful because the attraction for mom is so intense. Then second example is giving husband's attraction for the chest wife or chest wife's attraction for the husband. That is so pure and so perfect, that attraction. Uh, there are uh, our in Hindu mythology, not mythology, these stories are there. What is called uh, Savitri Sattavan. There are stories like that. Their love was so intense. Sattavan died. And Savitri said, the God of death came to take the dead body, no? the soul. He said, no, you cannot do it. You have to take me also. Well, no, how can? You are alive and he is dead. Then they know. And ultimately, the testing was done so much ways, but she ultimately conquered and the husband came back to life. So that's a story. Uh, but the point, point is that attraction, tremendous attraction for the chaste relationship, pure relationship between husband and wife. So that you can add. Add one, the attraction a baby feels for the mother, the attraction the chest relationship, one each one feels for that, and the third one, the attractive worldly position for a worldly man. Worldly man means they can give a chunk of your flesh from his body, but one penny is big, big thing for them. There are people like that. <laughs> they they save the mind money. They hoard the money. Even in his life, wearing ordinary, such a dirty cloth, not clean. I, we have seen in our early days in the, those who are, they, they hold things, but never enjoy. I neither give away. So that is, at, why? My, my fasting is good, if I can save one penny. And you have so much money, why are you fasting? Why don't you have a good food? And why not do the charity and you'll get more? But no, no such tendency. So this is called the, why love the attached, the deeply attached to the monetary resource or gold and jewel, <coughs> whatever is there. <coughs> That's why Ramakrishna has coined, what is Maya? Maya is Kamo Kanchana. Kamo is the desire, lust, and Kanchana is the gold or what is called the Greed, greed for that. Uh, so these two is Maya. If these two are gone from one's mind, then he's free soul. Uh, even the position, he may be having million, billion, but it's okay. But they don't get attached to that. That is called freedom, and that is the spirituality. And he says, God realization is possible if one can have this type of tremendous attraction for God. Mm. Tremendous. Yeah. Please 
again ramakrishna after saying this advice he is saying hi vedanto and next saying like a child please cure my cure me of my illness oh doctor the doctor was going to examine the master's throat sri ramakrishna was seated in the chair on the semi circular porch you can imagine the dakshineshwar semi circular porch in the on the side of the ganga and referring to dr das he said he is a villain <laughs> sarkar he pressed my tongue mani he thakur felt so badly uh, because you have so much pain cancer and to test he pulled the tongue and pressed it so hard ramakrishna felt so pain so he said he is a villain <laughs> He he pressed my tongue as if I were a cow. <laughs> Master, doctor, he didn't hurt you purposely. Then master said, no, he pressed the tongue to make a thorough examination. Anyway, so <clears throat> that is the end of the reading, and. is there any question came so then we can continue another 15 minutes are there it is the reading on september 20 sunday 1885 sri ramakrishna was seated in his room surrounded by devotees navagopal harolal rakhal latu and others were present a goshwami who was a musician was also there then am arrived with dr rakhal a bug bazar so he brought another doctor that's dr rakhal the physician began to examine the master he was a stout person and had rather thick fingers master smiling to the physician your fingers are like wrestlers <laughs> and then again mohendra sarkar <laughs> mohendra sarkar also examined me he pressed my tongue <laughs> He cannot remember that pain. <laughs> Whenever any doctor comes, that means he is telling, "Don't press me so hard." <laughs> I shall. Uh, then he said that your fingers are like wrestlers. Mahendra Sarkar also examined me. He pressed my tongue so hard that it hurt me. He pressed my tongue the way they press a cow. <laughs> doctor, I shall not hurt you, sir. the physician made out his prescription ramakrishna then started talking master to the devotees well people ask why if i am such a holy person i should be ill tarak tarak means sami shivananda bhagwan das baba ji too was ill and bedridden a long time that means he justifying that because someone is a holy person does not mean that his physical illness will not come bhagwan das baba ji was a great renowned vaishnava pandit he too was ill and he was also bedridden a long time before he passed away master but look at dr madhu at the age of 60 he carries food to the house of his mistress and he has no illness see now she says like a child <laughs> see i am a good guy i don't do any harm but see that guy. <laughs> but he is healthy and see my condition go swami sir your illness is for the sake of others you have taken up your self the sins of those who come to you you fall ill because you accept their sins a devotee you will soon be cured if only you say to divine mother mother please make me well a, a, a devotee means master am 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 always hide himself and different name. so he said you can be cured now you would just decide they will be cured but you don't want to like christ could have escaped the crucifixion he knew everything the plot and everything he said he will deny me three times eh? before the crow eh? cocking of the crow 
So he knows everything, but willfully they do this for the good of the world and take away the sins. So master, <clears throat> I cannot ask God to cure my disease. The attitude of the servant-master relationship is nowadays less strong in me. Once in a while, I say, oh, mother, please mend the sheath of the sword a little. That means the soul is inside, the, the sheath, the, you keep the, your weapon inside the covering. So this is the body is becoming ill. So I pray to mother, please mend the sheath, hmm? refer to his body. But such prayers are also becoming less frequent. I cannot say that prayer also. Nowadays, I do not find me. I do not find my I. I see that it is God alone who resides in this shit. So it is I don't find me as the person, but I see God is only here. So for whom I shall pray? If it's, I, I am not there, so it is God is only there. So I cannot pray that way. And he said, I cannot pray. The Goswami had been invited to sing Kirtan. A devotee asked, will there be any Kirtan? Sri Ramakrishna was ill and all were afraid that the Kirtan might throw his mind into ecstasy and thus aggravate the illness. Sri Ramakrishna said, let there be little singing. All are afraid of my going into ecstasy. Spiritual emotion hurts the throat. The Goswami began the kirtan. The Ramakrishna could not control himself. He stood up and began to dance with the devotees. The physician watched the whole scene. A hired carriage was waiting for Dr. Rakhal. He and M were ready to leave for Calcutta. They saluted the master. Sri Ramakrishna said to him affectionately, have you had your meal? And then they left. And again, the September 24th, another four days afterwards, a small reading. It was the night of the full moon. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on the small couch. He was very ill. Him and some other devotees were sitting on the floor. Master, talking to him. Every now and then I think that the body is a mere pillowcase. The only real substance is the indivisible Satchidananda. So it is very revealing uh, statements that he is feeling like a pillowcase and inside is the cotton. Is that So here this body is like a pillow, but inside is only Satchidananda. When I go into divine ecstasy, this illness of the throat remains away from me. I am now somewhat in that mood, and so I feel like laughing. Now, in this mood, when the mind is uplifted, then I don't identify with the body. And that's why, for me, it is just a fun, the, this cancer, this pain, etc. And I can smile at this. Some ladies of the family of Dijua arrived. They saluted the master and sat on this, uh, sat on this side. Pointing to one of the ladies, Sri Ramakrishna asked, Who is this lady? It is, is it she who bought up Dijua? Why has Dijua bought an ektara? Ektara means single string instrument. Um, it has two strings, sir. Master, Dijua's father is opposed to his views won't another people criticize him? It is wiser for him to pray to God secretly. Because Dija is a young boy, he used to come to Ramakrishna. And Dija's father didn't like that he comes too much to Ramakrishna. Because their studies and everything will be begun. And then there will be you know, meditation and prayer. So his father didn't like it. That's why Ramakrishna says, it is wise for Dija, him, to pray to God secretly. Of course, in our life also, it is said as much spiritual practice is done secretly, that much you become intense. Uh, but that does not mean that we will not do the 
um, prayer and meditation in the temple, but more is good as as much secretively. So no people will not understand that they will think he's the ordinary man. Ramakrishna gave the example: someone is not getting up in the morning. People think that that gentleman is sleeping. But in India, they use mosquito curtain for the mosquitoes. But Ramakrishna said he is doing japa in, under the mosquito net. Under the net, he is doing the japa. Well, Swamiji wants everyone to be up at four to be meditating. But Ramakrishna seems to advise like staying up late and waking up late. It is not for late. He used to use the whole night, the encourage whole night. For us, we cannot do that. Say, so Raja Maharaj even said that we have done all this, you will not be able to do. And don't do overdo, then your head will be warm up. And then it will be a headache. So better for us, seven, eight, six, seven hour at least sleep is very important. Morning time, cool time, evening time, cool time. If one can do before going to bed sometime, those are for us. Our lifestyle is different. What Ramakrishna's, any other thought, what duty was he, had he? On day and night, God, nothing else. A picture of Gauranga and Nitai hung on the wall of the master's room. It was the picture of two brothers singing devotional songs with their companion, Navadip, Ramlal the ma nephew of the master. Then, may I give him, meaning the master, this picture? Then master said, yes, give it. So that picture was hanging in Ramakrishna's room with the Nityananda and uh, what you call Sri Chaitanya. That picture, Ramakrishna has to give away to uh, M. And that, uh, that picture is now available in M's house in Calcutta. Sri Ramakrishna was the, under Dr. Pratap's treatment. He uh, awake in the midnight and felt extremely restless. Horis, his attendant, was in the room. Rakhal also was there. Ramlal was asleep on the bam, baranda. The master remarked later on, I was feeling extremely restless. I felt like embracing Harish. They rubbed a little medic medicinal oil on my head. Then I began to dance. He's saying that is the end of the reading of September 14th. <clears throat> that, that, that time we get this, I have not get, given enough time to think that you can think Sri Ramakrishna going to extreme suffering and pain physically. Uh, so, so much physical reactions are coming. So, that they are rubbing the oil in the head. These are, these are not, we should not think that some reactions should come to us. Uh, for us, be normal first. So don't be abnormal. In spiritual life, people, abnormality is sometimes considered a spirituality. Uh, but for us, we should be a very normal person, very reasonable, jnana, karma, yoga, bhakti, uh, balanced work, we should have to do that. Okay, we end our class here. We'll be, tomorrow will be uh, the class, uh, karma, eh? Uh, karma yoga, uh, so, but we'll see, someone will give the class tomorrow, because uh, uh, Maha Yogananda is not yet returned, so he may come back, or otherwise we'll manage. And now question, question is, some, uh, Samiji encouraged people to be bold and courageous, but are not you ignoring the unclean, uh, uh, but are not you ignoring the unclean carpet? What does it mean? So you said that carpet, you just ignore it and then you do get the good things. But Shamiji said that to be perfect in everything. And that's what I'm saying. But, but you, instead of looking at bad things, oh, you oh, oh, oh. No, no, don't look at the unclean carpet. I don't say that. that you, then, no, no, you have to understand. Will you correct the whole world sitting over here? what is um, uh, Putin is doing and what is going on in um, uh, the countries in fighting and in disaster. Will you correct everything from here? But there is something you, you you do, do you do your duty first, first, first of the point. You do your duty perfectly. You have enough to do. Before seeing what is others' fault, 
It is not the business. Uh, my point is that don't see fault with others' means. You have enough to do. Uh, are you finished with your own meditation, prayer, and japa and everything? Why are you spending time for that? If you are dutiful, it is responsible, yes, you will say it is to be done. That's under your responsibility. But it's not responsibility. We unnecessarily put our mind into such thought. That's why Samiji encouraged people to be bold and courageous, but not to only for that part. Bold and courageous for yourself. Are you doing your meditation? Are you perfected in your work? Are you, uh, uh, your, your pure life is being built up or you are seeing the fault of others' character or not looking at your own character? So this is the point. We are ignoring unclean carpet. It's not the point. It's, uh, suppose you are driving in the freeway. You see some house and there is so much graffiti in the wall. Huh? You can go and abuse the, who has done this and how to, will you do any correct there? Why are you polluting your mind? If you have anything to do, do. It is not actionlessness, but do action and not unnecessarily don't pollute your mind with negative thoughts. That is the point. Swamiji also said that to be bold and courageous with positive thoughts. And we have to do, if it is our duty, do that. If you can help someone, do that. If you cannot help, then what is the use of criticism, mere criticism? And looking, why? Because looking at the something defect, you are creating more defect in your mind. Rather, you watch what is my defects, where are my failures, where I am not working to be perfected, to be bold, to courageous, to wipe out my angularities. So that is the point. And it is a positive direction. Again, when Thakur says to renounce uh, lust and gold, does that mean lust for sexual pleasure and greed for money? Or is there a bo broader meaning to lust and greed? Yeah, lust and greed means for anything, starting from gross to subtle. As we move in spiritual life, it's gross things may not be that much, but subtle things will be uh, affecting the mind. So, yes, it is finer and finer levels of perfection is necessary. But the greed and this, this is the same thing, worldly thing to hold on and our sense pleasure. These are the major thing. A sense pleasure does not mean only sexual pleasure. Some people are uh, with the tongue, eating, eating, eating. Huh? Someone who is addicted to only seeing, 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 seeing whole world. Huh? Music. Huh? music maybe, but it is too much. If it is spiritual music, then that can help you. But if it's something, other music, that the music is good, but that music may take you to certain plane. But that uh, addiction comes. That means it is said that everything which pulls our mind down, not to God, so those things have to be avoided. And it falls, yes, a, a gross, Attraction, gross activities of the senses to the subtler and subtler and subtler. As the mind in spiritual life, the force becomes much stronger. The gross thing is gone. The, the, in look at our life. Whatever someone gives the, someone smoking or say drinking, people can give up drinking. But the sangaskara inside. You have to work with that. That is a harder task. Today, there is a bottle of wine. I will not take. Okay. I forced myself and left that place and went away somewhere. That way I can help. But the desire, yearning for the wine, which is in my heart, it is much deeper and deeper. So it, it is also an obstacle. So we should start from the gross, subtler and subtler. And it does not do that way. We have to fall in love with something other. Unless I get joy from something else, I cannot give these joys. They make a mistake. That's why we call sing bhajan, pray, read good books, have holy company, so that you get some joy from some other higher resource. When you get the joy from there, your mind, then you can 
withdraw that because it becomes natural because you are getting something. You cannot put your mind in blankness. Hey, I am Buddha. <laughs> and then mind will not, mind will run to the sexes. Buddha to become Buddha, look at that. Buddha to become Buddha, what he did, look at his life itself. Give up his all kingdom and all pleasure, all the kingly joys and fun. And then what happened? I am sitting under a body with a resolution, I shall die here. Let my body fall off. The skin and the flesh and bones separate out of proper bodhing without realizing that bodhi, that bodha, the illumination. I am not going to move from this seat and become emaciated, emaciated. Then he become Buddha. Then he took middle path and whatever. Look at the Ramakrishna. The four years of his passionate life, 12 years of his sadhana period. If that is, you see the net result, but you don't see the activity level before. But is it not also true that Buddha had all the things in his life, but most of us, we don't have all the things in our life? Not necessary. Us, like you Buddha are... was from that, he was a crown prince. <clears throat> He had all the enjoyment in life, all the things. But and then it is easy to renounce. But if you didn't get anything, suddenly... No, that's true. That's true. That's why it's called renunciation is not for a beggar. <laughs> renunciation is for a person who has something to do, something to have. You have your pocket money, you can renounce something. I, I have no money in my pocket. I am a renouncer. <laughs> <laughs> that should not be. That's why they should enjoy. For them it is not. That is not so, that's the wrong path. If they take sannas or renounce, path of renunciation and not enjoying all these things, the heart is searching for them, then it will be a struggle and a push and pull. So, but everyone has, has little desire for this and that. How much is the proportion? That one will have to settle. But experience is necessary. But someone not, does not, everyone does not need the experience in this life because we believe in our previous life, no? That's why you find many people by seeing. Buddha saw once the four aspects of life. Mm -hmm. uh, disease, uh, old age, and death. And also mendicant life, free life, no? These four, once he saw, he learned. That means he has so much inside, it ignites instantly. And also his enjoyment was complete. Uh, he was, if you don't take him as a human being, uh, as a special personality, God himself. So to demonstrate, they do all this. But that, you need not be a Buddha. But Buddhattva, you can attain Bodhisattva. But you need not be a Buddha. Buddha we cannot be. Ramakrishna we cannot be. We can be ordinary jiva. But we can realize God. So, this this is the point that uh, yes, experience is necessary. Very important point you have raised that unless you have experienced, no, you cannot give up life. That's why uh, poor stages of life in Indian um, tradition, spiritual tradition, is very scientific. Student life. Total celibate life. In Indian standard, total celibacy up to 25 years. No deviation. And society was congenial. And now it is, society has all mixed together and openness has come. But when we are young children, we know uh, the society was so pure in that sense. Up to student life, they are very stainless pure. Boys, girls, no? After that, Next twenty, years, you be you marry, you enjoy the life. Let let us see what the life can give. All the senses, experience, habit. Twenty five years, but with responsibility, take care of your mom, dad, your son, your wife, your relatives, whatever with your service. Sincere person, but going through the experience of all these things, and then you, after that, you twenty five years, twenty five years, fifty years, you reach fifty. Now you think, oh, I have lived that life of celibacy, I have lived that life of enjoyment and experience. Okay, husband, wife still there, but they will see that. Let another 25 years to 
I do my duty as much as you can detach, detach. Every day, detachment, detachment, detachment. That's why I call the life retreat and retreat, no? Bana prastha. Bana prastha means they are going to the forest. Forest means they, they used to, normally they used to, what they used to do? They used to go and build a hut not far away from their family in the forest, some corner, so that they can come occasionally, meet each other and help each other, but they are not into the family affairs of the son, son's grandson, their family. They are going not to interfere into their life and get separated. And then they, both of them, husband and wife, because of their experience is over, and they are like brothers and sisters. They each help each other in spiritual journey, meditating together, reading scriptures, singing, chanting, bhajan, this, that. Huh? And then matured 75, fourth stage, then husband says, enough time. Eh, we have lived together so many years in my life. And we have done our all duties. We have seen the whole world. All the experience of life is filled, filled up. It's a great life. And that's why India has produced so many sages. Sages don't drop from heaven. Drop, drop, drop. Huh? They're children. They're born where? The ideal family, ideal mom, ideal dad. Those who are dedicated to God. They pray for their child. And all they get the child, and that this child, child also learns the spiritual atmosphere. So it is great, great to contribute to the society. Such a child is a blessing to the society. And to live that type of life is an example in the society. Ah, so that these are values. That's why four stages of life have was followed for a long time. But you know, everything has its own failures. People fail to be a, to the ideal. So that is that is different. But ideal was there. But those who can go to the fourth stage from the student life, that's the Vedanta Ramakrishna mission. Look at that. Every boy or girl, they finish their education and their arch comes living in an atmosphere and they're I want to go to God realization direct, skipping second and third. Pages because they have done it before. No glory for anybody. This life they feel that they have skipped, but they have got the experience in some other life, and that is hiding, hiding in the sanskara, in the subtle mental plane. So, not everyone should be monk. It is a wrong. Buddhism did that mistake. Buddha, Buddha didn't do that. For followers of Buddhism, Buddha Saranga Chami. I will be all Buddhas, all be monks. And then that was a regulation. Every home, there will be one monk. They will have to join. After this age, they will have to, even there is a tradition. If the boy is um, eight, nine years, they will have to be a monk. Eight, nine years child, what he understands about monastic renunciation. They have no sense of enjoyment. What is the point of renunciation? So, but that is, that is decadence of the spirituality because making everyone a monk. And not necessary. That is one, some people will be inclined into this, some people will be inclined to going to the natural path. That's okay. So, that's why to be spiritual, there is a two scientific path. And, and it was followed for a long time. Another question. <coughs> The Gyanis say, not this, not the, not that, not the body, not the mind. Does not the Samadhi of the Sri Ramakrishna also encompass the mind and body? Are the mind and body not the manifestation of the Brahman? Uh, I am not the body, not the mind, we are saying. Because I have body identity. But I am hammering on my mind. No, 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 I cannot be the body. I am the Atman, I am the Chaitanya. But does the samadhi of Ramakrishna, you are saying a word samadhi. Samadhi means when the mind is lifted from the body, mind, emotion, intellect, ego, gone into that level, turiyo, at the dot point. In samadhi state, there is only God. Where is your body then? So that question does not ask. My mind does not remain there. 
we become mindless. Huh? But in our dream, mind remains every day. But in Brahma or Samadhi state, when one reaches this climax, their mind is totally absorbed, totally gone as it were. And that mind is a pure mind. So when they come down, they hold on to the pure mind and see the whole world God because to the pure mind. Okay? <clears throat> so, thank you all. So, we are done for today. We'll see you. Someone will be giving the class tomorrow at 7.30. Om Shanti, 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 Hari, Om Tatsat, Sri Ramakrishna, Arpanamastu.